Greetings, respected guests, and welcome to the Washington Center for the Performing Arts. Today's event is not intended to be partisan in any way. Sponsors for this event include Ole Arts Magazine, Bowser's Books, the Northwest Playwrights Alliance, TC Media, and the Washington Center for the Performing Arts. Over the course of the day, a variety of readers from our local government and community will be reading 30 minutes of materials from the document known as the Mueller Report. Each reader has been asked to present the material without commentary, and transitions between speakers will be very brief. When a reader comes to a section of text that has been redacted, they will indicate so by ringing a bell. We hope you find this information useful and enjoyable. Section B, Kirill Dmitriev's post-election contacts with the incoming administration. Soon after midnight on election night, Dmitriev messaged, who was traveling to New York to attend the 2016 World Chess Championship. Dmitry Peskov, the Russian Federation's press secretary, who was also attending the World Chess Championship, at approximately 2.40 a.m. on November 9th, 2016, news reports stated that candidate Clinton had called President-elect Trump to concede at, wrote to Dmitriev, Putin has won. Later that morning, Dmitriev contacted Nader, who was in New York, to request a meeting with the key people in the incoming administration as soon as possible in the light of the great results. He asked Nader to convey to the incoming administration that we want to start rebuilding the relationship in whatever is a comfortable pace for them. We understand all the sensitivities and are not in a rush. Dmitriev and Nader had previously discussed Nader introducing him to the contacts Nader had made within the Trump campaign. Dmitriev also told Nader that he would ask Putin for permission to travel to the United States where he would be able to speak to media outlets about the positive impact of the Trump's election and the need for reconciliation between the United States and Russia. Later that day, Dmitriev flew to New York where Peskov was separately traveling to attend the chess tournament. Dmitriev invited Nader to the opening of the tournament and noted that if there was a chance to see anyone key from the Trump camp, he would love to start building for the future. Dmitriev also asked Nader to invite Kushner to the event so that he could meet him. Nader did not pass along Dmitriev's invitation to anyone connected with the incoming administration. Although one World Chess Federation official recalled hearing from an attendee that President-elect Trump had stopped by the tournament, the investigation did not establish that Trump or any campaign or transition team official attended the event, and the president's written answers denied that he had. Nader stated that Dmitriev continued to press him to see, to set up a meeting with transition officials and was particularly focused on Kushner and Trump Jr. Dmitriev told Nader that Putin would be very grateful to Nader and that a meeting would make history. According to Nader, Dmitriev was very anxious to connect with the incoming administration and told Nader that he would try other routes to do so with, besides Nader himself. Nader did not ultimately introduce Dmitriev to anyone associated with the incoming administration during Dmitriev's post-election trip to New York. In early 2016, Dmitriev again broached the topic of meeting incoming administration officials with Nader in January or February. Dmitriev sent Nader a list of publicly available quotes of Dmitriev speaking positively about Donald Trump in case they were helpful. Section C, Eric Prince and Kirill Dmitriev meet in the Seychelles. Section I, George Nader and Eric Prince arranged Seychelles meeting with Dmitriev. Nader traveled to New York in early 2017 and had lunchtime and dinner meetings with Eric Prince on January 3, 2017. Nader and Prince discussed Dmitriev. Nader informed Prince that the Russians were looking to build a link with the incoming Trump administration. He told Prince that Dmitriev had been pushing Nader to introduce him to someone from the incoming administration. 
Nader suggested in light of Prince's relationship with transition team officials that Prince and Dmitriev meet to discuss issues of mutual concern. Prince told Nader that he needed to think further about it and to check with transition team officials. After his dinner with Prince, Nader sent, Prince, Nader sent Prince a link to the Wikipedia entry about Dmitriev and sent Dmitriev a message stating that he had just met with some key people within the family and inner circle of reference to Prince and that he had spoken at length and positively about Dmitriev. Nader told Dmitriev that the people he met had asked for Dmitriev's bio and Dmitriev replied that he would update it and send it. Nader later received from Dmitriev two files concerning Dmitriev. One was a two-page biography, and the other was a list of Dmitriev's positive quotes about Donald Trump. The next morning, Nader forwarded the message and attachments Dmitriev had sent him to Prince. Nader wrote to Prince that these documents were the versions to be used with some additional details for them, with them referring to members of the incoming administration. Prince opened the attachments at Trump Tower within an hour of receiving them. Prince stated that while he was at Trump Tower that day, he spoke with Kellyanne Conway, Wilbur Ross, Steve Mnuchin, and others while waiting to see Bannon. <coughs> Sorry. Cell site location data for Prince's mobile phone indicates that Prince remained at Trump Tower for approximately three hours. Prince said, said that he could not recall whether during those three hours he met with Bannon and discussed Dmitriev with him. Prince booked a ticket to the Seychelles on January 7th, 2017. The following day, Nader wrote to Dmitriev that he had a pleasant surprise for him, namely that he had arranged for Dmitriev to meet a special guest from the new team, referring to Prince. Nader asked Dmitriev if he could come to the Seychelles for the meeting on January 12th, 2017, and Dmitriev agreed. The following day, Dmitriev sought assistance from Nader that the Seychelles meeting would be worthwhile. Dmitriev was not enthusiastic about the idea of meeting with Prince and that Nader assured him that Prince wielded influence with the incoming administration. Nader wrote to Dmitriev, this guy, Prince, is de designated by Steve Bannon to meet you. I know him and he's very well, well, very, very well connected and trusted by the new team. His sister is now a minister of education. According to Nader, Prince had led him to believe that Bannon was aware of Prince's upcoming meeting with Dmitriev, and Prince acknowledged that it was fair for Nader to think that Prince would pass information on to the transition team. Bannon, however, told the office that Prince did not tell him in advance about his meeting with Dmitriev. The Seychelles meetings. Dmitriev arrived with his wife in the Seychelles on January 11, 2017, and checked into the Four Seasons Resort where Crown Prince Mohammed and Nader were staying. Prince arrived that same day. Prince and Dmitriev met for the first time that afternoon in Nader's villa with Nader present. The initial meeting lasted approximately 30 to 45 minutes. Prince described the eight years of the Obama administration in negative terms and stated that he was looking forward to a new era of cooperation and conflict resolution. According to Prince, he told Dmitriev that Bannon was effective, if not conventional, and that Prince provided policy papers to Bannon. Right. Lots more dinging. The topic of Russian interference in the 2016 election did not come up. Prince added that he would inform Bannon about his meeting with Dmitriev and that if there were interest in continuing the discussion, Bannon or someone else in the transition team would do so. Afterwards, Prince returned to his room where he learned that a Russian aircraft carrier had sailed to Libya, which led him to call Nader and ask him to set up another meeting with Dmitriev. According to Nader, Prince called and said he had checked with his associates back home and needed to convey to Dmitriev that Libya was off the table. Nader wrote to Dmitriev that Prince had received an urgent message that he needs to convey to you immediately and arranged for himself, Dmitriev, and Prince to meet at a restaurant on the Four Seasons property. 
At the second meeting, Prince told Dmitriev that the United States would not accept any Russian involvement in Libya because it would make the situation there much worse. After this brief second meeting concluded, Nader and Dmitriev discussed what had transpired. Dmitriev told Nader that he was disappointed in his meetings with Prince for two reasons. First, he believed the Russians needed to be communicating with someone who had more authority within the incoming administration than Prince had. Second, he had hoped to have a discussion with greater substance, such as outlining a strategic roadmap for both countries to follow. Dmitriev told Nader that Prince's comments were insulting. Hours after the second meeting, Prince sent two text messages to Bannon from the Seychelles. As described further below, investigators were unable to obtain the content of these other messages between Prince and Bannon, and the investigation also did not identify evidence of any further communication be between Prince and Dmitriev after their meetings in the Seychelles. Section 3, Eric Prince's meeting with Steve Bannon after the Seychelles trip. After the Seychelles meetings, Prince told Nader that he would inform Bannon about his discussion with Dmitriev and would convey that someone within the Russian power structure was interested in seeking better relations with the incoming administration. On January 12, 2017, Prince contacted Bannon's personal assistant to set up a meeting for the following week. Several days later, Prince messaged her again about Bannon's schedule. Prince said that he met Bannon at Bannon's home after returning to the United States in mid-January and briefed him about several topics, including his meeting with Dmitriev. Prince told the office that he explained to Bannon that Dmitriev was the head of a Russian sovereign wealth fund and was interested in improving relations between the United States and Russia. Prince had on his cell phone a screenshot of Dmitriev's Wikipedia page dated January 16, 2017. And Prince told the office that he likely showed that image to Bannon. Prince also believed he provided Bannon with Dmitriev's contact information. According to Prince, Bannon instructed Prince not to follow up with Dmitriev, and Prince had the impression that the issue was not a priority. Prince related to Bannon that Prince related to Bannon did not appear angry, just relatively uninterested. Bannon, by contrast, told the office that he never discussed with Prince anything regarding Dmitriev, RDIF, or any meetings with Russian individuals or people associated with Putin. Bannon also stated that he had Prince mentioned such that had Prince mentioned such a meeting, Bannon would have remembered it, and Bannon would have objected to such a meeting having taken place. The conflicting accounts provided by Bannon and Prince could not be independently clarified by reviewing their communications because either one was able to produce any of the exchange messages they exchanged in the time period surrounding the Seychelles meeting. Prince's phone contained no text messages prior to March 2017, though provider records indicated that he and Bannon exchanged dozens of messages. Prince denied deleting any messages, but claimed he did not know where there were messages on his device before March of 2017. Bannon's devices similarly contained no messages in the relevant time period, and Bannon also stated he did not know why messages did not appear on his device. Bannon told the office that during both the months before and after the Seychelles meeting, he regularly used his personal BlackBerry and personal email for work-related communications, including those with Prince, and he took no steps to preserve those work communications. Section D. Kirill Dmitriev's post-election contact with Rick Gerson regarding U.S.-Russia relations. Dmitriev's contacts during the transition period were not limited to, limited to those facilitated by Nader. In approximately late November 2016, the UAE National Security Advisor introduced Dmitriev to Rick Gerson, a friend of Jared Kushner, who runs a hedge fund in New York. Gerson stated he had no formal role in the transition and had no involvement in the Trump campaign other than occasional casual discussions about the campaign with Kushner. After the election, Gerson assisted the transition by arranging meetings for transition officials with former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair and UAE delegation led by Crown Prince Mohammed. When Dmitriev and Gerson met, they principally discussed potential joint ventures between Gerson's hedge fund and RDIF. 
Dmitriev was interested in improved economic cooperation between the United States and Russia and asked Gerson who he should meet with in the incoming administration who would be helpful towards this goal. Gerson replied that he would try to figure out the best way to arrange appropriate introductions, but noted that confidentiality would be required because of the sensitivity of holding such meetings before the new administration took power and before cabinet nominees had been confirmed by the Senate. Gerson said he would ask Kushner and Michael Flynn, who the key person or people were on the topics of reconciliation with Russia, joint security concerns, and economic m matters. Dmitriev told Gerson that he had been asked by Putin to develop and execute a reconciliation plan between the United States and Russia. He noted in a text message to Gerson that if Russia was approached with respect and willingness to understand our position, we can have major breakthroughs quickly. Gerson and Dmitriev exchanged ideas in December 2016 about what such a reconciliation plan would include. Gerson told the office that the transition team had not asked him to engage in these discussions with Dmitriev and that he did so on his own initiative and as a private citizen. On January 9, 2017, the same day he asked Nader whether meeting Prince would be worthwhile, Dmitriev sent his biography to Gerson and asked him if he would share it with Jared or somebody else very senior to the team so that they know that we are focused from our side in improving the relationship and my boss asked me to play a key role in that. Dmitriev also asked Gerson if he knew Prince and if Prince was somebody important or worth spending time with. After his trip to the Seychelles, Dmitriev asked Gerson that Bannon had asked Prince to meet with Dmitriev and that the two had had a positive meeting. On January 16, 2017, Dmitriev consolidated the ideas for U.S.-Russia con reconciliation that he and Gerson had been discussing into a two-page document that listed five main points. Point one, jointly find terrorism. Two, jointly engage in an anti-weapons of mass destruction efforts. Three, developing win-win economic and investment initiatives. Four, maintaining an honest, open, and continual dialogue regarding issues of disagreement. And five, ensuring proper communication and trust by key people from each country. On January 18, 2017, Gerson gave a copy of the document to Kushner. Kushner had not heard of Dmitriev at that time. Gerson explained that Dmitriev was the head of RDIF, and Gerson may have alluded to Dmitriev's being well connected. Kushner placed the document in a file and said he would get to it the right get it to the right people. Kushner ultimately gave one copy of the document to Bannon and another to Rex Tillerson. According to Kushner, neither of them followed up with Kushner about it. On January 19, 2017, Dmitriev sent Nader a copy of the two-page document, telling him that this was a view from our side that I discussed in my meeting on the islands and with you and with our friends. Please share with them. We believe this is a good foundation to start from. Gerson informed Dmitriev that he had given the document to Kushner soon after delivering it. On January 26, 2017, Dmitriev wrote to Gerson that his boss, an apparent reference to Putin, was asking if there were if there had been any feedback on their proposal. Dmitriev said, we do not want to rush things and move at a comfortable speed. At the same time, my boss asked me to try to have the key U.S. meetings in the next two weeks if possible. He informed Gerson that Putin and President Trump would speak by phone that Saturday and noted with that information that that information was very confidential. The same day, Dmitriev wrote to Nader that he had seen his boss again yesterday, who had emphasized that this is a great priority for us and that we need to build this communication channel to avoid bureaucracy. On January 28, 2017, Dmitriev texted Nader that he wanted to see if I can confirm to my boss that your friends may use some of the ideas from the two-pager I sent you in the telephone call that will happen at 12 p.m. EST an apparent reference to the call scheduled between President Trump and Putin. Nader replied, definitely paper was so submitted to team by Rick and me, they took it seriously. After the call between President Trump and Putin occurred, Dmitriev wrote to Nader that the call went very well. 
My boss wants me to continue making some public statements that us, in parents, SIC, Russia, corporation is good and important. Gerson also wrote to Dmitriev to say that the call had gone well, and Dmitriev replied that the document they had drafted together played an important role. Gerson and Dmitriev appeared to stop communicating with one another in approximately March of 2017 when the investment deal they had been working on together showed no signs of progressing. Section 3. Ambassador Kislyak's meeting with Jared Kushner and Michael Flynn in Trump Tower following the election. On November 16, 2016, Catherine Vargas, an executive assistant to Kushner, received a request for a meeting with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. The same day, Vargas sent Kushner an email with the subject, Missed Call. Russian ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislyak, dot, dot, dot. The text of the email read regarding setting up a time to meet with you on 12-1. Let me know how to proceed. Kushner responded in relevant part, I think I'd do this one. Confirm with Dmitry that this is the right guy. After reaching out to a colleague of Sims, Symes at CNI, Vargas reported back to Kushner that Kislyak was the best go-to guy for routine matters in the U.S., while Yuri Ushakov, a Russian foreign policy advisor, was the contact for more direct substantial matters. Bob Forsman, the UBS investment bank executor who had previously tried to transmit to candidate Trump an invitation to speak at an economic forum in Russia, see Volume 1, Section 4, may have provided similar information to the transition team. According to Forsman, at the end of an early December 2016 meeting with incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and his designated deputy, KT McFarland, in New York, Flynn asked Forsman for his thoughts on Kislyak. Forsman had not met Kislyak, but told Flynn that while Kislyak was an important person, Kislyak did not have a direct line to Putin. Forsman subsequently traveled to Moscow, inquired of a source he had believed to be close to Putin, and asked and heard back from the source that Ushakov would be the official channel for the incoming U.S. National Security Advisor. Forsman acknowledged that Flynn had not asked him to undertake that inquiry in Russia, but told the office that he nonetheless felt obligated to report the information back to Flynn, and then, and that he worked to get a face-to-face -face meeting with Flynn in January 2017 so that he could do so. Email correspondence suggests that the meeting ultimately went forward, but Flynn has no recollection of it or of the earlier December meeting. The investigation did not identify evidence of Flynn or Kushner meeting with Ushakov after being given his name. In the meantime, although he had already formed the impression that Kislyak was not necessarily the right point of contact, Kushner went ahead with the meeting that Kislyak had requested on November 16. It took place at Trump Tower on November 30th, 2016. At Kushner's invitation, Flynn had also attended. Bannon was invited but did not attend. During the meeting, which lasted approximately 30 minutes, Kushner expressed a desire on the part of the incoming administration to start afresh with the U.S.-Russian relations. Kushner also asked Kislyak to identify the best person, whether Kislyak or someone else, with whom to direct further discussions, someone who had contact with Putin and the ability to speak for him. The three men also discussed U.S. policy towards Syria, and Kislyak floated the idea of having Russian generals brief their transition team on the topic using a secure communications line after Flynn explained that there was no secure line in the transition team offices, Kushner asked Kislyak if they could communicate using secure facilities at the Russian embassy. Kislyak quickly rejected that idea. Section 4, Jared Kushner's meeting with Gorkov. On December 6, 2016, the Russian embassy reached out to Kushner's assistant to set up a second meeting between Kislyak and Kushner. Kushner declined several proposed meeting dates, but Kushner's assistant indicated that Kislyak was very insistent about securing a second meeting. 
Kushner told the office that he did not want to take another meeting because he had already decided Kislyak was not the right channel for him to communicate with Russia. So he arranged to have one of his assistants, R.V. Avi Berkowitz, meet with Kislyak instead. Although embassy official Sergei Kuznetsov wrote to Berkowitz that Kislyak thought it important to continue the conversation with Mr. Kushner in person. Kislyak nonetheless agreed to meet instead with Berkowitz once it became apparent that Kushner was unlikely to take a meeting. Berkowitz met with Kislyak on December 12, 2016 at Trump Tower. The meeting lasted only a few minutes, during which Kislyak indicated that he wanted Kushner to meet someone who had a direct line to Putin. Sergei Gorkov, the head of the Russian government-owned bank, VEB. Kushner agreed to meet with Gorkov. The one-on-one -on -one meeting took place the next day, December 13, 2016, at the Colony Capitol building in, Mon in Manhattan, where Kushner had previously scheduled meetings. VEB was and is the subject of Department of Treasury economic sanctions imposed in response to Russia's annexation, annexation of Crimea. Kushner did not, however, recall any discussion during his meeting with Gorkov about the sanctions against VEB or sanctions more generally. Kushner stated in an interview that he did not engage in any preparation for the meeting and that no one on the transition team even did a Google search for Gorkov's name. At the start of the meeting, Gorkov presented Kushner with two gifts, a painting and a bag of soil from the town in Belarus where Kushner's family originated. The accounts from Kushner and Gorkov differ as to whether the meeting was diplomatic or business in nature. Kushner told the office that the meeting was diplomatic, with Gorkov expressing disappointment with U.S.-Russia relations under President Obama and hopes for improved relations with the incoming administration. According to Kushner, although Gorkov told Kushner a little bit about his bank and made some statements about the Russian economy, the two did not discuss Kushner's companies or private business dealings of any kind. At the time of the meeting, Kushner companies had a debt obligation coming due on the building it owned at 666 Fifth Avenue. And there had been public reporting, both about efforts to secure lending on the property and possible conflicts of interest for Kushner, arriving out of his company's borrowing from foreign lenders. In contrast, in a 2017 public statement, VEB suggested Gorkov met with Kushner in Kushner's capacity as CEO of Kushner Companies for the purpose of discussing business rather than as part of a diplomatic effort. In particular, VEB characterized Gorkov's meeting with Kushner as part of a series of roadshow meetings with representatives of major U.S. banks and business circles, which included negotiations and discussions of the most promising business lines and sectors. Forsman, the investment bank executive mentioned in Volume 1, Sections 4 and A1, and etc., told the office that he met with Gorkov and VEB Deputy Chairman Nikolai Shemovsky in Moscow just before Gorkov left for New York to meet Kushner. According to Forsman, Gorkov and Shemovsky, told him that they were traveling to New York to discuss post-election issues with the U.S. financial institutions, that their trip was sanctioned by Putin, and that they would be reporting back to Putin upon their return. The investigation did not resolve the apparent conflict in the accounts of Kushner and Gorkov or determine whether the meeting was diplomatic in nature, as Kushner stated, focused on business, as VEB's public statement indicated, or whether it involved some combination of those matters or other matters. Regardless, the investigation did not identify evidence that Kushner and Gorkov engaged in any substantive follow-up after the meeting. Rather, a few days after the meeting, Gorkov's assistant texted Kushner's assistant, hi, please inform your side that the information about the meeting had a very positive response. Over the following weeks, the two assistants exchanged a handful of additional cordial texts. On February 8, 2017, Gorkov's assistant texted Kushner's assistant, Berkowitz, to try to set up another meeting and followed up by text at least twice in the days that followed. 
According to Berkowitz, he did not respond to the meeting request in light of the press coverage regarding the Russia investigation and did not tell Kushner about the meeting request. Section 5, Peter Aubin's outreach efforts to the transition team. In December 2016, weeks after the one-on-one -on -one meeting with Putin described in Volume 1, Section 4, etc., Peter Aubin attended what he described as a separate all-hands oligarch meeting between Putin and Russia's most promise, prominent businessman. As in Aubin's one-on-one -on -one meeting, a main topic of discussion at the oligarch meeting in December 2016 was the prospect of forthcoming U.S. economic san sanctions. After the December 6, 2016 all-hands meeting, Aubin tried to establish a connection to the Trump team. Aubin instructed Richard Burt to make contact with the incoming Trump administration. Burt was on the board of directors for Letter One, another company headed by Aubin, and had, work, had done work for Alpha Bank. Burt had previously served as U.S. Ambassador to Germany and Assistant Secretary of State for European and Cor Canadian Affairs, and one of his primary roles with Alpha Bank and L1 was to facilitate in introductions to business contacts in the United States and other Western companies.